Hello, this is Mr. Anderson from Kella Community College, and we're going to be looking at some trigonometry problems. The first one is going to be on uh, number 49 in uh, the book here, on the 10th edition book, on page 157, and it's going to be negative 6 sine of pi over 3 x plus 4. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this into uh, three phases. Uh, step one, we're going to look at the amplitude. Step two, we're going to look at the omega. And step three, we're going to look at the vertical shift. So starting with step one, we're going to take a look at, I'm going to make a, an x-axis here with eight tick marks. And what we do is we set up our uh, period, which we know is 2 pi for sine. And that means uh, in two periods, we'd be at 4 pi, and this will be pi over 2. That's our gap. We'll use that later. Uh, we are going to now take a look at the amplitude, which is negative 6. So our height is going to be 6 on the high end, and low it would be negative 6. So what we are about to do is we're going to go from low, sorry, we're going to start here at the origin where sine starts, and we're going to go down instead of up because of the negative on the amplitude there and we're going to continue going through one period like so. And now our second period is going to be like that. So medium, low, medium, high, medium for the first one. Medium, low, medium, high, medium for the second one. So that is our first, uh, that is our first part of this problem. The second problem, we're going to work with the omega. The omega is pi over 3. Let's figure out what our new period is. And we'll do that by taking our gap, which is our pi divided by 2, and we're going to divide by pi over 3, but that's going to be multiplied by the reciprocal, 3 over pi, because pi over 2 divided by pi over 3, skip, flip, and multiply, and this means our new period, or excuse me, our new gap is going to be 3 halves. So in our second picture, we're going to go from 6 to negative 6, 8 tick marks, And instead of this being pi over 2, it's now 3 halves. This is the x-axis where I'm going to want to label every single point. So we've got 3 halves here. Then we have 6 halves, which is the same thing as 3. Then we have 9 halves. And then we have 12 halves, which is 6. 15 halves. 18 halves, which is 9. 21 halves. And 24 halves, which is 12. And again, the graph moves medium, low, medium, high, medium, and oscillates in that pattern. So I think I skipped one here. Oop, I did. Let's see. There we go. I'll catch it on the way back. There we go. Okay, so for our third and final part, we're going to deal with this vertical shift to four. So I'm going to put five tick marks in here. One, two, three, four. I'll have to make that my six right there and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I've got my six and six here. What I'm gonna do on my final graph here is I'm gonna move these up four spaces. So this is 10, and this is going to be negative two. Now if I still do my six from my origin here, my old origin, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, this is now two on my space there. And I like to kind of keep that x-axis, the old x-axis in there, um, I'm sorry, it's 4, not 2. I like to keep my old x-axis in there just so I can kind of map my medium, low, medium, high, medium, low, medium, high, medium, like so. And there's my sine wave like so. Put in my 8 tick marks. And then I'm going to have my one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is my new x-axis here. My new x-axis is way down here at zero. So here's my new x-axis. And now I can label my points um, and I can pick any five I wanna pick. So I'll maybe choose my origin right there, uh, which used to be zero, zero, which is now zero comma four, because it's four units higher than what it used to be over here on the second picture. I'm going to choose my gap, which is 3 halves, comma, negative 2. 
I'm gonna go way up here to the top here. Oops, sorry. Um, I'll go way up to, to the top. This is nine halves comma 10. I wanna show you one of those. This is six comma four. And my final point over here is 12 comma four. So there's my five points. The domain is real because I can have um, this go from infinity to positive infinity. And the range is gonna be where y is between the negative two and 10. And I'm using set notation here. Interval notation would be bracket negative two comma 10 bracket. All right, so for my next problem, I'm going to look at problem number 53. Let's turn this pen on here, 53. Same page, page 157. And this time we're only gonna deal with an amplitude. This is 5 thirds sine of negative two pi over three. Now before I deal with that amplitude and this omega, I'm going to take that negative and apply the odd even property of sine to this one, which means that if I have um, sine of negative x, that's equivalent to negative sine of x which means that I can take that negative and move it out to the front. So this becomes a negative 5 thirds sine of 2 pi over 3 x. So now for my first part of my drawing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, where I know that my 2 pi is my period length for sine, cosine, and their reciprocal functions. Pi over 2 is my gap, and my 4 pi is my distance there. I'm going to have a negative sine wave, and that's because of my negative amplitude, like so. There you go, perfect. Now, my height is going to be 5 thirds, or you could say 2 and 2 thirds if you'd like to, or a negative 2.6 repeating. And there you have your amplitude. Um, now let's process the omega. So we're going to take our gap, pi over 2, and divide it by our omega, but instead let's multiply by its reciprocal, so 3 over 2 pi. We do some simplification there, the pi's, these simplify to 1, and 3 over 2 times 2 is 3 fourths. So on my new and final picture, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm going to label, um, I only need to label 5 of these, but for the sake of understanding the x-axis a little bit, it might be nice to label them all. And that's going to mean that this is going to be 3 fourths. This is going to be 6 fourths, which is reducible to 3 halves. Then this is 9 fourths. And then we have 12 fourths, which is reducible down to 3. And then after 12 fourths, we have 15 fourths. And then we have 18 fourths, it's reducible to 9 halves. And then 9 fourths, sorry, 21 fourths, excuse me. And then after 21 fourths, we have 24 fourths, or 6. And again, we have our swoop de whoop of our sine wave. There's one period, and here's another period like that. You can label a bunch of these. This is the origin. There's one of my points. I like to do the gap point here, so that's 3 fourths, comma, negative 5 thirds. Way up here at the top, this is going to be 9 fourths comma five thirds. So one, two, three, I just have to do two more points. Let's do this one here, nine halves comma zero. And let's do the last one, which is six comma zero. And now we have my five points. My domain is real again, and my range is gonna be uh, my y going between negative five thirds and five thirds. Also, in interval notation, I could have used this as well. This will get the job done. And interval notation is really nice unless you have asymptote lines. And those asymptote lines make interval notation pretty tricky. All right, well, thank you for watching.